ready to worship with us? We're gonna start off with something you know. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet, 'cause He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Yeah, sing it out. Oh, He. find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. You know, in this crazy season, we can either by, be ruled by fear or by trust and faith. There's something so sweet and so comforting and it brings much peace when we put our trust in Jesus. Come on, sing this with me. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon 
Welcome. For those of you who are joining us online this morning, welcome. It's great to have you guys. Um, kind of an interesting weekend, but, uh, but if you are watching us at home, which most of you are today, thank you for being with us today. Um, if you're watching us for the first time, if this is your first time connecting with us and joining with us, thank you so much. There's a lot going on in this world right now. We're very honored that you chose to be with us today. So whether you're one of our COTKers and you're at home watching or you're here for the first time, thank you so much. We got kind of an interesting service today. Pastor Todd's got an awesome message. Um, but there's a couple things that I get to let you guys know about uh, that are coming up. And uh, so you can kind of mark your calendars. The first one is this. Right now, throughout the community, there are several of our small groups that are hosting uh, their group right now. And they're watching. So if you are not in a small group, man, now is a great time, better than ever, to get into a group. And you can find out more about our groups online at cotk.us or through the app. You can find a spot right there to sign up. And you will also see, if you're watching on Facebook Live right now, you will see a link pop up to those groups right there. 
Um, also, we have Discovery 101 coming up, which is going to be next Sunday, and it will actually be here at the church. Uh, so for those of you that have signed up for that already, you'll be getting a phone call about that. And if you would go, hey, I want to know more about you guys in the midst of all the craziness going on, sign up online, and that link will pop up as well if you're watching on Facebook Live right now. And then one last thing, uh, two last things actually before I turn over to our pastor. Um, if you are watching for the first time, you're going, hey, I would love for you guys just to reach out to me. Let me know what's going on. We'd like to send you a gift. Um, you can actually fill out an online digital connection card, and that is popping up in the link right now. Um, or you can find that at cotk.us, and it's underneath the Connect tab. There's a spot right there for a online connection card. And we'd love just to send you something. It's our way of saying thank you for tuning in for the first time today. Um, and if you have any questions about anything at all, that's a great spot to ask them. And last but not least, if you are giving today, you can do that either through the app um, or online as well at cotk.us. And I'm going to pray and turn it over to Pastor Todd as we get into today's message. So, Father God, I thank you, God, so much just for your goodness. God, I thank you for your love and your grace. That, guys, we're walking through this moment, Lord, that you are with us. And, God, we just give you these next few moments. And, God, I ask that you would speak into our hearts, into our lives, and we'd walk out of this moment different than before. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Todd. Well, glad that you guys are joining us. Uh, we have some of our staff and, and leaders and elders here uh, that, are, that are part of this today. I'll, I'll be honest, it's kind of weird talking just to a few people and a camera, but I, I know this, that God is really good. Amen. And I had no message until just a little bit ago. That's all right, because I also know that God was with me. I spent the last uh, four days, came back Thursday night very, very late, actually Friday morning early, in Haiti, and man, was so powerful. It begins to put things in perspective when you see what can be. And tonight, or if you're watching today, uh, my heart for you is that you know what can be, that you know what can be. And so the message is, is really simple. Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is we've been in a relationship series and this is like a foundational truth in all relationships, what I'm speaking about. Uh, and, and it is understanding that difficulty's coming. You know, the series that we've been in is Ties That Bind, but today's message is how to thrive, not just survive. I hate it when God waits to the last minute to give me something to speak. I really dislike it an awful lot, but I will say this, it drives you to prayer more. And I think that there's maybe a lesson that I need to learn and maybe all of us can learn is that when you don't have the answer, you tend to seek God an awful lot more. And we're not guaranteed all the answers, but we have a lot of them and they're waiting to be found in the presence of God and in his word. So let me just encourage you, number one, in this season to seek God and to read his word. And so how do we thrive, not just survive? So here's where we are going. We are going to the book of Daniel chapter three. And we're gonna look at a somewhat familiar Bible story. You know, I, I found it interesting that when everything's going good, I tend to go on cruise control because everything's going good. Does everybody do fairly well when everything's going good? Yeah. yeah, yeah, typically we do. If everything's great, like no problems, you're like, oh man, let's, 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 just, let's just coast because everything's good. But I just wanna remind you that the unexpected often happens. How you deal with what is unexpect, unexpected or unwanted is going to determine the quality of your life and the quality of the relationships that you have because you will encounter the unexpected. You will encounter the unwanted, the things that you don't ever wanna to have to deal with that come your way. Can anybody say coronavirus? Because I don't wanna deal with coronavirus. I don't wanna get sick from coronavirus, but I know this, it's a reality that we're dealing with and how we deal with the difficulties around us, whether they're in circumstances that we didn't see coming and schools being shut down and parents having to scramble or not even being able to find childcare. Can I just say as a church, this is our heart to be able to help you with that. We're working on that right now. But the unexpected can mess things up. When everything's good, you're usually good. But when the unexpected happens, how do you respond? How do you handle that? So we're going to look at three young men, Hananiah, Azariah and Mishael. That was their Hebrew names, but most people, if you've been in church for any length of time, have probably heard the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's a great story, 
the nation of Israel is in captivity in Babylon. And the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, has set up a statue of himself, 90 feet tall, nine feet wide. He's placed it front and center where everybody's passing by every day. And every day, people are required when they hear the music starting to go and bow down before this huge statue of Nebuchadnezzar. And the penalty for not doing that is death. You're thrown into a furnace. You're burned to death. Sounds pretty horrible. And I would imagine that these three young men who had a heart for God, who loved God with all of their heart, found themselves in a situation that they did not want to be in, that they did not expect. How they handled it is brilliant. And for us, it's foundational in understanding how we handle the unexpected, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in a virus that none of us want to get, whether, whether it's something that, that happens, that a death of a loved one, an unexpected change in vocation because you've lost your job, or, or the list can go on and on. How do we deal with that? Well, let's look and see how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego handled that. We're looking at Daniel chapter 3, verses 10. Actually, we're going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to read fast. So y'all got to keep up. It says, this is, um, this is Nebuchadnezzar's advisors. They said, you issued a decree requiring all people to bow down and worship the gold statue, statue when they hear the sound of the, the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there's some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, whom you've put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve gods and don't worship the gold statue you've set up. The Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I've set up? I'll give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I've made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you'll be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power. This is a bad situation. This is a very bad situation. It's unexpected. They didn't think that the king was going to set up a, a statue and they were going to be forced to bow before it. How they handle the unexpected determines their destiny. Most people, when faced with a life or death situation, are going to choose life, right? Of course, it's just the logical course of action. But what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego can I just say Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael? It's way easier for me. How they handle it is unbelievable. And it changes the course of history, not just theirs, but ours as well. The three young men answer, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He'll rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you've set up. Here's how you thrive and not just survive. First point, you've got to have faith that's greater than fear. You have to have faith that's greater than fear. My faith in what God has spoken about who I am, about who he is, about the future that he has for me, has to be bigger than the fear that may try and jump on me in the circumstances that were unexpected or that were, one, that were unwanted. I got back into, into, into town and, and actually I was, in, I was in the airport in Miami and I, I called my wife and she was at Sam's and she sounded a, a little bit freaked out. She's like, uh, I gotta get out of here quick. She's like, people are going crazy. They like, there's no toilet paper. There's no paper towels. There's no Clorox. There's no wipes. I'm trying to feed the kid because y'all, the kids, because y'all know that Sam's got good pizza and it's dirt cheap. And you got four kids. That's where you go. And so she's, she's like, but the, man, these people are, are panicking. There's like a spirit of fear and it's trying to get on me. So I'm just going to leave. L let me just say, 
that most people, when faced with a life or death situation, they resort to bending towards fear. But when your faith is greater than your fear, it's not a motivator in your life. When your faith is greater, that you believe what God says about who you are and who he is, you believe that more than the circumstances that spell out certain death for you, like these three young men, you can say, huh, you gotta do what you gotta do, but like, I'm not real worried about it because your faith isn't in what's going to happen to you. It's not in the circumstances. It's rooted in the truth that God knows you, Amen. that God loves you, that God has a purpose and a plan for you. It grieves me that people are panicking over a virus. I get it. No, I get it. It can be scary. It can be a life or death situation. That's why we're not having services because we're gonna honor the authorities over us in our government and in our governor. And we're, we recognize that, that people have a potential for being infected and we don't want that because it can end in death. But can I just say my heart for everyone that hears my voice right now is that you don't bend to fear. You don't let fear become your destiny. You know that God has a purpose and a plan for you right where you are and that your faith is greater than your fear. How do you build faith? How do, you, how do you get to the place where you trust God more than the craziness and the bad circumstances that are going on around you? Romans 10, 17 says, so faith come, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need God to speak to you. Listen to me clearly. This is how you gain faith that's bigger than fear. You hear God's word to you. That's why I'm a constant proponent of reading the Bible. Hebrews 4, 12 says that it's alive, that it's active. That means it works in us, that it's sharper than a two-edged sword and can separate the flesh from the spirit. God's word cuts away the fleshly fear and the bend towards our sin self. Are you guys following me? I hope so. I don't, you can't shake your head, and does it, but there's a few people here. Does this make sense, guys? Yes. Do you have faith that's greater than fear? A life verse for me. It's in my top probably five to 10. Isaiah 41, 10. It says, fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. Fear not. I wanna remind you that fear is a choice, but it's one that, that, that you have to choose not to dwell on it because by our human nature and in a scary event like a pandemic, the natural tendency of this flesh is to go, oh my gosh, where's the toilet paper? I need 173 rolls right now. I don't know why, but people do. That's the, that is the natural tendency. Like we bend towards fear, but we have to choose to have faith. We have to choose to believe what God says about who we are. And this is what we see in this story. We see three young men who know who they are because they know who their creator is. They know who their designer is. They know the purpose, the plan, and the call on their life that was spoken over them by God. And they don't operate in fear. I pray that you do not operate in fear. You wanna thrive, not just survive. Choose to hear God's word, to believe it, and to let it be the motivator in your life. Not, not a, a news broadcast or for the love of everything, what you may be watching right now, Facebook. Don't let that be the, the informer of what's going on around you. Let it be God's word. Let it be God's word. Isaiah 26, three, another life verse, a little further down, but it's still a life verse. You will keep in perfect peace all whose mind is set on you because he trusts in you. Amen. Everybody wants peace especially in the middle of craziness. If you've ever been in the middle of craziness, I have four kids, I know what that's like. When they were little, it was living in the middle of craziness. It was wonderful and awesome. The kids are a blessing from the Lord and I love them, they're amazing, but I'll never forget the time that we walked into the boys' bedroom. We just had two at that time and Christopher, who was maybe three years old and Nicholas, who was probably one, somehow Christopher got underneath the cabinet, grabbed an entire tub of Crisco, brought it to his room that was carpeted, took his little brother and slathered him completely and totally in Crisco 
and then slathered himself in Crisco. Both of them in nothing but the underwear. Nicholas in, 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 his, in his diaper and Christopher in nothing but an underwear. And then they decided to roll around all over the carpet and smear the rest of it into the carpet. That's crazy. And you know what we had to do? After, after we had to, to kill the, the boys and then pray that God raised them back from the dead. <laughs> Actually, we took pictures because, yes, it was, it was cute. But it was crazy because let me just tell you, it's really hard to get five pounds of Crisco off of two kids and a carpet. And you can get it off the, off the kids. It took, it took about a bottle and a half of Dawn and the carpet was stained for eternity. So it was crazy. What do you do in the middle of crazy situations? My wife knows. She married me. <laughs> you will keep in perfect peace he whose mind is set on you because he trusts in you. Where's your mindset? Faith greater than fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We don't have to have a spirit of fear and operation in our life. I look at these three guys and go, that is awesome. These are three young men. And, and this is what they say when Nebuchadnezzar's freaking out the king who conquered all of the known world. And his rage is directed at these three young men. The, the, the king who seems to everyone else to be all powerful, who set himself up as a god. He says, you're God gonna die. Well, that was a really good voice, wasn't it? it scared me. He says, uh, this is what they say. Uh, we don't need to defend ourselves before you. If we're thrown into the blazing fire, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He'll rescue us from your power, O majesty. Then verse 18, profound. This is a key I want us to get. They said, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you've set up. Here's the second point. How do we thrive, not just survive? Number two, you have to give the outcome to God. Give the outcome to God. So many people are afraid of a virus, but in reality, they're not afraid of the virus. They're afraid of death. We have nothing to fear when we trust God. A discipline that my wife and I engage in regularly. And this started years ago, thanking God for everything that he's given us. Because whatever you focus on is magnified. And so we're grateful. God, thank you for our marriage. God, thank you for the kids that you've given us. Lord, thank you for the house that we live in. Thank you for the dogs that, we've, that you've given us. Lord, thank you for the cat. Okay, maybe not the cats. My wife can thank God for the cats. Lord, th thank you. And then for me, I've had to go through, Lord, our children are yours. Our home is yours. We're not promised tomorrow. And nobody wants to think about those dark, really depressing, hard things of what does the future hold? No, no mama wants to think about something terrible happening to her kid. Nobody wants to think about getting sick and, and being in a hospital and ultimately dying. Nobody wants to think about these things. But listen to me carefully. Regardless of what the future holds, I know that God is good and so is his plan for me. Nobody listening to my voice is going to get out of this life alive. And so many people are controlled by a spirit of fear around one thing, death. Let me just tell you, God is the author of life. And when you serve and follow him, when you surrender your life to Jesus, you enter into your eternal reward the moment you've surrendered all to him, turned from your sin, received his forgiveness. You enter into your eternal reward that moment. Do you have to battle through this life? Yes, you do. But your eternal reward does not begin when you die. I remember going through a, a, a graveyard and seeing on somebody's tombstone, born and gave the date. Entered into his eternal reward and it gave a date. But I'm pretty sure it was the day that they died. Let me just tell you, when we follow Christ, the, our eternal reward begins now because we've brought to life and we will live forever. Listen to me. Death is not failure and death is not final. I should never allow the, 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 the threat of death to be a motivator in my life that takes me to the place of fear because when I do that, it keeps me from the place of faith. Amen. Give the outcome to God. I was in El Salvador, oh gosh, this was probably eight years ago, leading a mission trip. 
And I ate some street food, which is kind of par for the course for me. I'm an adventurous eater. Hey, I'm in El Salvador. I'm in San Salvador. And I got so unbelievably sick with food poisoning. It was either from this old lady that was selling a hot drink on the side of the road called Polito, which I still to this day don't know what it is. It tasted kind of funny. It wasn't so good, but I drank the whole thing. Or it was I found a local pupuseria at night and sat down and they had the vinegar, the chopped up vegetables and vinegar mix that I put all on my pupuseria. I don't know what it was, but something got me unbelievably sick. So sick that I got to the point where I thought I saw my shoes in the toilet. It was bad. And it was in that moment of pain, of agony, I prayed a very real prayer. And I was dead serious. Lord, if you need to take me, I'm okay with it. I was serious. Wife, kids, house, pastor. God, it was so bad. I was like, God, it's okay if I'm gone. And you may say, how selfish and terrible. Let me just remind you that death is neither failure nor is it final. I don't have a death wish in my life. I'm not gonna put myself in situations that I know are gonna end in my death. But can I tell you, I should never, all of us should never allow the fear of what is to come be a motivator in our life to keep us from standing tall for God. When you stand tall for God, don't be surprised when you get targeted, but don't let fear creep in. Does this make sense to you guys? I hope so. Give the outcome to God. He'll rescue us, but even if he doesn't, that sounds like a lack of faith, but can I tell you, there's no greater faith than trusting God in whatever circumstance you're in and you give him the outcome. God, I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to trust you. This is our third and final point. Number three, trust God with all your heart. Trust God with all your heart. Why were these three young men not afraid? They were not afraid because they were able to trust God. They trust him. Do you trust God? How do I thrive and not just survive when the unexpected happens? I have faith that's greater than fear. Is your faith greater than your fear? I give the outcome to God. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. It's God. I'm going to trust him. I know that he's good because he's proven himself over and over. The reason that many people don't know that God is good is because they've never really put him to the test. Trust him, test him, follow him. My number one life verse. It's the, the verse that's guided my life. It's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. God, I trust you. I trust you. You have me. I'm not going to worry about what the future holds, but I'm going to trust you with all of my heart. Then it says, lean not on your own understanding. I'm not going to try and figure it out. I can't figure it out. This is crazy. They're closing schools. God, they're, 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 it, it, it's, it, what's going on? I'm, I'm not going to try and figure it out. I don't know but I know who knows, it's God. And I'm gonna trust him with all of my heart. I'm not gonna lean on my own understanding in all of my ways, I'm gonna acknowledge him. God, I need you right now. God, every good thing, your word says, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, I'm trusting you and thanking you for every good gift in my life. I'm gonna trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean not on, the, on my own understanding in all of my ways, acknowledge him and know that he'll direct my path. <laughs> I wrote this. God's path always leads to life. I'm not going to read the rest of the chapter. I'm going to tell you what happens though, and you should read it in Daniel chapter three. Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw us into that fire, but God's going to rescue us. Even if he doesn't, we're still never going to bow down. And guess what happens? They get thrown into the furnace. They get thrown into the furnace. But that wasn't the end for them. They had given the outcome to God and the end for them was far different than what Nebuchadnezzar the king thought. 
he threw him in. In fact, he got it so hot that the guards who threw them in were burned to death. They threw those three young men in. And then Nebuchadnezzar says, wait, what's going on? They're, they're still alive. They're walking around, but wait a minute. There's not, there's not three, there's four. And the fourth one looks like, like the son of God. Because I think it was. I think Jesus was right there with him. And you need to know that Jesus is right there with you through everything that you walk through. He's, he's walking with you through it. The question is, are you gonna stay with him? Stop trying to jump out of the place that he is with you. Know that, that, that God is with you. Trust, trust. They take him out of the fire because it's pretty freaky, you know? The guards that threw him in died because the furnace had been heated seven times hotter than normal. And yet these three young men come out of the flames. They don't even smell like smoke. Nebuchadnezzar makes a decree. He says, if any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There's no other God who can rescue like this. And then the king promoted them. Listen to me carefully. There is no other God that rescues like our God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. When you follow Jesus, he always leads you to life. Always leads you to life. My prayer for you is that you recognize if you're gonna thrive when the whole world is going crazy, your faith needs to be much, much bigger than your fear. So get in God's word, seek him, listen to him. Give him the outcome and trust him with all your heart. He's trustworthy. If you're listening to me right now, my prayer for you is that you don't operate in fear, that you trust God with all of your heart, that you turn from your own sin, that you turn from your way and you turn to Jesus. How do you do that? It's, it's really simple. Actually, a, a religious teacher and Judaism came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus looked at him and said, you need to be born again. And, and this religious leader, his name was Nicodemus. He said, how can that happen? I'm an old man. I can't be born all over again. And Jesus said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, there's two births, one of water and one of spirit. You need to be spiritually reborn. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Can I just say, turning to Jesus means you recognize you need to be born again. Just as Jesus looked at that religious leader and said, you need to be born again. Maybe you recognize that Jesus is speaking to you today. And he's saying to you, you need a fresh start. You need to be spiritually born again. Here's how you do it. You say, Jesus, I know who I am. I know my sins, but I believe that you are, you are the Messiah, the Savior. You're God. I turn from my sins. I give you my life. I make you my Lord. I pray that you do that today. If you wanna do that, all you have to do is pray with me. Just right where you are, just say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, but I believe you died on that cross to pay the price for my sin. I give my life to you. I receive your forgiveness. I give you everything. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. If God, if God did something in you today and you prayed that prayer, please let us know. Find us on Facebook, find us on, on our website, find us online. Let us know. My heart as a pastor is to see you grow in your walk with God, to know the purpose and the plan that He has for you. That's, I, I, want, I so want that for you, that you connect, that you grow together. 
not just with God, but with godly people. So that you, like these three young men, when it gets crazy, know that your God's bigger than the crazy and that he's a God who delivers. Thanks so much for joining us today. And just know that we'll be giving you updates on what's going on. Uh, my, my encouragement to you is not just to connect with God by yourself, though that's important, but connect with other people. Check out our app, find a small group, connect with somebody, reach out. We love you, we're praying for you. God bless and have a great rest of the Sunday. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thank you for being with us today. I know it's not the same in person, but thank you for watching. And I know this, that God is with us regardless of where we are. And it says where two or three are gathered in his name, he's with us. Let me remind you, he's with us. He's calling us to trust him, seek him. What does he have for you? Don't operate in fear, operate in faith and let's do it together. Thank you guys for being a part of this. I look forward to seeing y'all soon and you'll be hearing more updates about what God's calling us to do as a church in the very near future. Have a great day. God bless.